uh, paper that we published, this is medically supervised water only fasting, followed by a whole plant food diet and its effect on visceral fat. So we were particularly interested, we had a DEXA scanner, we were particularly interested in identifying what's happening to body weight during fasting. Because people often say, well, you lose weight, but you gain it back. Well, what we discovered is that that's not exactly the case. Um, this were uh, fasts ranging from 15 to 14 to 20 days uh, with some refeeding time. And you can see here that the changes in total weight and fat mass, the uh, body weight um, goes uh, down and then recovers, but the fat loss continues. Lean loss goes up and then it, and then it reduces the body recovers. This next graph may be a little bit easier to understand. This is an example of a gentleman who lost uh, uh, total total weight loss. 12%, total body loss, 18%, but total visceral fat loss, 55%. So 20, almost 20% 20 of the entire fat on the body was eliminated during this two-week fast, but 55% of the entire visceral fat load was eliminated, only losing 4% of lean tissue. And more importantly, we know that six weeks after fasting, that lean tissue not only is recovered, but it's actually, the body has a higher percentage lean tissue at six-week follow-up than it did proportionally uh, at baseline. So you get all your muscle back, you continue to lose fat. Uh, so yes, body weight goes down during fasting, it comes up after fasting, but the weight you gain after fasting is water, fiber, glycogen, and protein, not fat. The fat loss continues even as the weight loss goes up. This paper, a preliminary observational study of potential effects of prolonged water-only fasting on whole plant food refeeding in normal weight females. So we had, the next thing we wanted to do, we wanted to know what happens to healthy people that are metabolically healthy, have normal blood pressure, normal blood glucose, and normal lipids. What happens to them when they fast? And so we went about recruiting metabolically healthy people, but we found that was actually quite difficult because it turns out only 12% of the population are metabolically healthy now. 88% of people are no longer healthy. Sometimes they're not necessarily overweight, but they're still not metabolically healthy because they have altered blood pressure, they have altered lipids. Uh, we found it so difficult, in fact, recruiting healthy people that we ultimately had to resort to recruiting staff members at the True North Health Center because it turns out they were healthy. Uh, they live and eat at True North Health, and it, apparently it helps a lot because when we started testing them, they were able to pass the test. And so we, many of our subjects turned out to be our own staff. And you can see here, these are the baseline characteristics. Their, this was their BMI was normal, their blood pressure was normal, their blood glucose was normal. But what was fascinating was after fasting, so this was um, normal weight people, they fasted five to 14 days, average was 10 days. They refed for an average of five days, and then we followed them up six weeks later. And here's what we found. Their baseline uh, weight improved even more and sustained even more. Six weeks was down at 116 from 124. So they lost an average of eight pounds. And these are people, remember, that are starting off normal weight. So body weight at six weeks was down. BMI was obviously down. Abdominal circumference was down. They lost 3.1 inches around their waist. Uh, systolic blood pressure, which was 110, on average, was down at 106, so it improved even further. And for every point in systolic blood pressure drops, there's thought to be a 1% reduction in all-cause mortality. So even when your blood pressure is normal, it's it's even better uh, to go down a little more. Diastolic blood pressure, cholesterol levels, which were normal, were even healthier, as was blood glucose levels. So, oops, excuse me. So you see baseline um, total fat mass. They weren't fat, but they were even healthier afterwards. Total lean mass um, the, that had dropped during fasting had recovered by the end, of, even by the end of refeeding. As a percentage of overall lean mass, their lean mass ends up higher eventually. But remember, because they've lost weight, there's less of them in total. Okay. This was another case that we published 
This was total resolution of hydronephrosis and neurotectasis in partial regression of unspecified retro, uh, retroperitoneal mass. This was a 66 year old woman who had adopted a vegan diet, but was still overweight. She had been diagnosed with this unspecified retroperitoneal mass. They weren't sure if it was um, a fibrotic mass or a cancer. And so they said what they would need to do is go in there and do a biopsy, but it was kind of tricky because of where it was located. She also had a hydronephrosis and, and uretorectasis and kidney cysts. So she had alterations in her kidney um, issues. Um, this was the CT scan that showed a four by three by four by three centimeter mass um, that they were proposing to biopsy. They couldn't get her in for a month to do the biopsy. So in that month, what we did instead was we put her on a 13 day water only fast, had 11 days of refeeding time. And then we followed up 18 days later. Well, it turns out that during the fast, that mass reduced so much, there was nothing left to biopsy. So they had to cancel the, the procedure. Her body weight went from 232 to 217, resulting in 14 pounds weight loss. BMI went down from being high risk class three to moderate risk class two on a single fast. Her blood pressure dropped from 164 to 124, a 40 point drop uh, in blood pressure. And this is the mass before, and this is the lack of the mass uh, afterwards. It was much, much smaller, not large enough to biopsy. Um, this is another case. This was long-term uh, relief from chronic post-traumatic headache after water-only fasting and an exclusively plant food diet. So this was a dentist who had undergone a traumatic brain injury. She got hit in the head with a pole and had had constant daily head pain for 16 years. Every moment of every day, constant daily headache. Um, underwent 41 days of water-only fasting, followed by 20 days of refeeding, during which time the daily headaches were dramatically lower in intensity, uh, including having completely pain-free periods, but wasn't completely resolved. And so after six months of refeeding, we brought her back and did a second 40-day water-only fast, followed by 20 days of refeeding, during which time headaches were no longer an issue. Here's a chart that shows fast one, fast two, fast three. And at the end of five years, she has uh, no longer headache uh, issues. Uh, BMI is, is sustained at 22, down from originally 33. Systolic blood pressure sustained at 106 over 67. So she not only got well, but she was able to stay well. And actually now we have uh, 10 year fault data she continues to do um, very well. This case was a uh, water-only fasting followed by an exclusively plant food diet in the management of severe plaque psoriasis. Psoriasis is a uh, really disturbing condition for a lot of people because it's visible on the skin. It's an autoimmune uh, condition where it's the body's immune system that's creating this problem. This particular gentleman had had long-standing problems, 28 year history of severe, what's called plaque psoriasis. And he decided to undergo 13 days of water-only fasting. Uh, so slightly less than two weeks. This was his skin before we treated him. That's called plaque psoriasis. This was after just a couple of weeks <laughs> of fasting, and this was two months later on follow-up. And uh, uh, process of, you know, obviously quite a bit of difference in a short period of time. Uh, prolonged water-only fasting is a safe and effective treatment for managing type 1 and type 2 hypertension. This is a study we did with our colleagues from uh, the Mayo Clinic. Uh, it, we recognize that hypertension is a huge problem. It affects half of the U.S. adults. It's associated with $131 billion annually. That uncontrolled hypertension is one of the leading contributing causes of death and disability. And the risk of developing uh, cardiovascular disease due to hypertension doubles for every 20 over 10 point of blood pressure increase. So this is a very serious problem. And that is true for blood pressure anywhere over 115 over 75. So even quote normal blood pressures of 125 or 120 um, over 80 still put you at increased risk for premature death and disability. Um, in this trial, we investigated the safety and feasibility using the same standards we used in the previous study that I showed you, using the same Chronic criteria for adverse events from the American Cancer Society. This enrolled 29 people prospectively. So unlike the other, which was a retrospective analysis of, of data, this was a prospective. So people were 
went through informed consent. They were enrolled in this study. 29 patients, 19 female, 10 male, average age 62. Um, most of them were still on hypertensive medications as we started the study. They hadn't been able to be uh, weaned previous to the study. Um, just as a re reference, high blood pressure has two components, the systolic and the diastolic. The systolic is the top number. It represents the blood and the vessels when the heart contracts. And diastolic, or the bottom number, represents the blood and the vessels when the heart relaxes. And uh, there's two stages. Stage one, if your blood pressure is 130 over 80, if either number is then you're stage one hypertensive. If your top number is 140 or 90 or greater, then you're stage two. So these uh, participants underwent um, pre-feeding. Fasting ranged from seven to 40 days with the average fast, uh, median fast being 11 days. Refeeding, average feeding was five days. Then we brought these patients back at six weeks uh, and uh, evaluated how successful they were at maintaining their weight loss and their blood pressure and blood free state. And then we tracked people down at a year to see if they were able to sustain it. So <clears throat> you can see that um, most of these patients when we started were um, stage um, two, 140 or 90 over Grady or greater. Uh, and uh, some were somewhat less. Uh, we used the same classification uh, that we talked about before. There were um, no category five or category four events. And there were hundreds of, you know, the, as expected of the mild and moderate symptoms. These category three events were all uh, hypertensive. And none of them lasted more than a day, and they were all in people, patients, obviously, that already had hypertension because that's why they were coming in. Okay. So this is the median BMI, which is a calculation of height and weight. And you can see their BMI has dropped. Uh, you can see their median body weight went from 190 to 177. And this is on follow-up. So keep in mind, they go from 190 to 174 at the end of the fast. They regain water, hydro, you know, uh, fiber, protein. Car and then at six-week follow-up, they were actually lower. So they were losing additional weight. And then at one year follow-up, they had maintained that for a year on average. And in fact, um, when we look at the blood pressure, we find uh, a similar story. That we look at the baseline, we look at the six-week follow-up, and then we look at 12-month follow-up. And the people that had, uh, they had dropped from stage two to hypertension down to stage one were able to maintain those improvements even 12 months later. This chart may help you. Median systolic blood pressure starts at 142, ends up at 12 months later, 127. Granted, not as low as it was when they left the center. So there was a little bit of recurrence. And, and part of what happens is, I know you're going to find this shocking, but not everybody is 100% compliant when it comes to diet and lifestyle change. If we had gotten 100% compliance, we would have expected we would have had stability or even additional improvements. But nonetheless, they're starting 142. A year later, they're down at 127. Here they're on medications, here they're not. This is the median diastolic pressure. Interestingly enough, diastolic pressure, which represents more of the large arteries, they start off at 81, they end up at 73, 12 months later, even lower than they ended the fast, um, which I, I think is really impressive. And then if we look at um, any medication use, most of them are medicated. Uh, at six we follow up, only one person was on medication and that was one half dosage. So 14 of the 15 medicated people were unmedicated at six weeks. And then when we tracked people down at one year, there had been a little bit of recurrence in um, six of the patients that had to go back on some level of medication, but the rest of them had been able to maintain not only normal pressure, uh, but uh, a drug-free state. And so this is the medium abdominal circumference. Again, notice that the abdominal circumference at one year on average is lower than it was even when we ended the fast. Uh, median systolic blood pressure, median body weight, and medium abdominal circumference. These are the average drops at six weeks. Um, we also looked at um, treatment accessibility 
uh, adherence screen, or in other words, this is a way of of uh, determining how um, acceptable is the diet and lifestyle ranges to patients. And it really didn't change at the end of the fast or the end of refeeding. And in fact, on 12 month follow-up, you'll notice the food acceptability question, would, could they like the food? Baseline was 47, six weeks was 47, end of refeeding 48, 12 months, there really was no change. So they didn't um, get tired of eating the food. They were still able to enjoy uh, their meals at a similar level to they were at baseline. Um, this is a scale that looked at, you know, were they able to complete the treatment? Most of them were. Was I able to adhere to the requirements of the treatment? Yeah, people did fine with the treatment. Uh, did they find it distressing? Not so much. People didn't find it particularly distressing. Um, the treatment was effective as a way to treat hypertension, overwhelming agreement with that. And also, would they recommend the treatment to others? So overwhelmingly, people were satisfied with this treatment. We had one dropout, although dropouts sometimes have nothing to do with satisfaction. It has to do with life circumstance. Some, you know, kids get sick, things happen. This is a dot plot. You'll notice that even though there's only a few outliers, those few actually have a profound effect on the averages because it's a small study with only 29 people. So we didn't have too many outliers here, but the ones we had uh, didn't help the averages. But nonetheless, uh, it's pretty amazing uh, the response that we demonstrated in this first um, prospective study.